Welcome to Inside Hilltopper Athletics, brought to you by Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. Here's your host, Todd Allum. And welcome into Inside Hilltopper Athletics. I am Todd Allum. Joining me for this first segment, head coach of West Liberty Football, Roger Wiley. Coach, uh, it was the Hall of Fame game this past weekend. A lot of great inductees. Uh, it was nice to see uh, already a Hall of Famer, but Zach Anidro as the honorary captain of this one. Yeah, there was a lot of young men that played for us that came back uh, for the Hall of Fame. Uh, you know, I remember Andy Schumacher was actually the first game I ever saw in West Liberty in 91. It was the last game of the season against Geneva, and I was like, oh, he's really good. And so, um, unfortunately, I did not get to coach him, but his son played for us here. And so, you know, there was a lot of ties through there with Cedric Harris and a lot of the guys. And then, I, you know, I kind of had double veil walked into the hall of fame ceremony and i'm sitting there and a guy looked up at me i said oh i swear to god that's floyd Schuler, and that was his brother and i'm like, good thing i didn't say the only reason i reckon i looked at his wife who was sitting with him like well that's not floyd's wife so that must not be floyd but no congratulations to all the inductees and and you know having zach back and with his young children running around the field that's what this has all, had been all about for us as family that they always can come back and I'm glad that they do well uh, it was kind of foreshadowing with Zach Amidro being there that first quarter was back and forth it looked like a uh, Zach Amidro led uh, toppers team with the amount of points being scored in the back and forth Frostburg got it started off with a 65 yard touchdown and a two-point conversion uh, but the toppers back and forth Hunter Patterson came out uh, just on the scene in this game, found a little bit of space, and he took off multiple times for 80-plus-yard 80 yard, 80 yard touchdowns. Yeah, the t Hunter has that explosiveness that he can take the ball at every time if we can get him the ball in space. And if you look at his production that he had, that was just in a quarter and a half. He yeah. didn't play the rest of the game after that. But I think he had 234 yards, 144 rushing, 90 receiving. Um, but he can have a definite impact in the game, but we got to find a way to get him through a whole game. Um, and if you look at his explosive plays for us so far this season, that, that has somewhat, we have to make that a normality other than here and there. Um, so we're looking for some consistency there to take some pressure off of him. Our receivers need to step up and our quarterbacks need to play a lot better. So we have that explosiveness. It's scary. And it wasn't like we were going against a bad defense. You know, they have five first team all conference guys back on defense. Uh, I think it put them kind of a little bit in shock. I was in shock on how easy they were scoring, you know, five touchdown passes in the first half. It, and basically guys were running free, they were naked, meaning, you know, it's not like guys were draped all over them. They're making great plays. We blew coverages and that's what you can't have in, in any form of football is blown coverages. Guys got to be on the same page. Guys got to understand their responsibility and what they're supposed to be doing. Um, and, you know, I'd like to say that you know, the best thing was to say they caught us by surprise, but they didn't. Those are exact things that we practiced with them and how they were going to try to isolate people and get people open. And um, it's frustrating as coaches when you prepare for something and then we don't even make an attempt. And, you know, we go went back, watched the film of practice, and they were doing it right. And for some reason in the game, it was nowhere close to what we were doing all week. And that's what we have to rectify because this team has, has practiced well, but we haven't been able to get it to the games. And, you know, I might have, you know, we have a lot of competition things we do in practice. Uh, I'm thinking about eliminating. I'm trying to find some way different that we can get it done on Saturday. So I was proud of how we played up front on both sides of the ball. You know, they had three returning first team all guys on their inside positions, and um, we moved the ball on them. You know, at times we ran the ball. Like it wasn't just a pass game. We ran the ball. We threw some screens. We had some things open. But we have to take it to the next level where we come machine-like and we're going to make some changes of how we do things just to try to get a better product on Saturdays. Now, speaking of some of the development on the offensive side of the ball, we got to see three quarterbacks play on Saturday. Uh, your take on their play throughout? 
Um, you know, overall, we need better quarterback play. I mean, I think, you know, being the next quarterback, I think a lot of your decisions have a uh, direct outcome of the game. And we have to make better better decisions faster, um, meaning one of the picks where we threw the ball to a receiver that ran the wrong route and they saw him and they just tried to force it in there and other than – Throwing it away, living the play was on first down, living the play, another down, don't make those mistakes. Um, so, you know, I don't know who we're going to start. You know, obviously they each have things they do well, but I need to find who's going to do it the best all the time. And you still have Keikoa. I was going to try to get him into the game at some point in time, uh, ran out of time a little bit. Uh, but we needed to see them under live action. Um, so to say so um, but the big thing is if we can get consistent in running our routes I think it'll ease up things because I think our run game and you know offensive line Isaac Talvo played for the first time all year I think he's one of the better offensive linemen in the con offensive linemen in the conference he you know I didn't see their defensive end who last year had three or four sacks in this I don't think he had a sack and so, but the big thing offensively, the development of Will Balgo at tight end. I mean, it, we are going to have to make him more of a threat and, you know, in the pass game because he has the capabilities, he has great hands. Um, but again, it comes to our outside receivers being disciplined in their route running, and that's what we're really going to work on. Well, the final score of this ball game uh, was 57 to 23. Frostburg State would get the victory. Uh, the following game coming up for the Toppers, as they hit the road for the first time this year, they go to Institute West Virginia to take on West Virginia State. Uh, it'll be at 6 p.m. next Saturday. Uh, what can we expect to see from uh, West Virginia State? Well, they have probably one of the better running backs in the conference in Felder. I think that they've been moving him around a little bit more, meaning utilizing him more in the pass game as a wide receiver, lining up at wide receiver. Um, so he's very versatile, and then they're, you know, so they do some things. They got a bigger quarterback that will run the ball at times. Um, so offensively, and they got some nice little receivers. So, you know, for them offensively, they're going to try to be 50 50. They're not going to come out and just air it out. They're not going to come out and just try to run it down our throat. They're going to try to be 50 50. And then defensively, they play the odd stack, which they have a bigger corner into the boundary. Um, up front, there's a real returning guys that we played against last year other than one linebacker. So they're pretty experienced on the defensive side. Uh, when I looked at the two deeps the other day, I, I saw a lot of familiar faces, a lot of fam uh, familiar names. Now, on the flip side of things, we haven't played state in two years because of the scheduling. So, um, you know, defensively, they run an odd stack, which we don't see very often. So our offensive line is really going to have to have communication with the quarterback so we can get the protection set the right way, the blocking scheme set the right way. Well, Coach, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to be with us. Good luck down at Institute and the travel down there. Uh, folks at home, thanks for watching this first segment. And again, tune in uh, Saturday night at 6 p.m. The Toppers will play down in Institute, West Virginia, against West Virginia State. And we will be right back for more on Inside Hilltopper Athletics. Disasters happen. Pick the team that takes care of them all. Powered by offices in Wheeling, Morgantown, and Pittsburgh, Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration is ready to handle any size emergency at a moment's notice. We have the right people, knowledge, and equipment to respond 24 hours a day. I'm Roger Wiley. When disaster strikes your home or business, tell your insurance provider you prefer the restoration company the Hilltoppers call. Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. And welcome back to Inside Hilltopper Athletics. Joining me for this segment, head coach of women's soccer, Pete McMenemy. Coach, uh, welcome back to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, this past weekend, uh, the Toppers took on conference opponent and just West Liberty in general, doesn't matter what sport or just out on the street, uh, rival in Fairmont State. Uh, they came uh, to town and... Uh, unfortunately for the Toppers, couldn't get a victory in this one. Fairmont would uh, end up winning this one 5-1. to one. But in the first 25 minutes of this game, it was even uh, neck and neck. Uh, how did you feel that early part of the game went? 
Yeah, I thought we actually started the game pretty well. Um, we spoke um, to the team at length, you know, going from previous kind of games um, that we had to start a lot quicker and a lot faster, and I thought we thought we did that. Um, we started pretty strong in the opening kind of 20, 25 minutes, and it, uh, like you said, it was a pretty even game um, up until that point. Uh, your take on how this game went in that second half or after that first 25 minutes? Yeah, I just think the first the first uh, two goals um, were just poor from us defensively. Um, we have to do a much better job at that. Um, and we spoke about um, ways that, you know, that can't really happen um, for us if we want to be successful. Um, you know, we've con we conceded two goals and I think it was like not even a minute or a, a space of two minutes, which... That really gives you a big uphill battle after that, um, and then kind of to concede the third just before half time. Um, we spoke at half time like it just gives you such a mountain to climb against any team, um, never mind a, a strong team like Fairmont. So um, that was obviously disappointing to to concede those goals just kind of in quick succession just before half time. And what are some of the building blocks though? You you can find some things to build off of uh, this early season. Uh, things for you. What do you really hope to see as we move forward in these next couple matches? So I think first and foremost is how we want to play our style of play and uh, on the ball has has been um, it, it's we've seen progression from game to game and how we've played um, and that that to us is really really important. I think people have to keep, we all have to keep that in mind and um, when we're looking at results that we're we're trying to play a certain way. Um, and, and it's not easy. It's not an easy thing to do for a lot of players. So there's been a lot of adapting over time. Um, and, and we hope, obviously, that we start to see the benefits of that in terms of the results. Um, but we've seen a lot of progress um, in terms of that. Um, obviously, we need to work on some things defensively. Um, ultimately, you have to keep the ball out of the net as well as put the ball in the net. Um, and so far, um, we fell a little bit short when it comes to that. But um, there's a long way to go. It's a long season. Um, we have two uh, tough games coming up this week on the road, um, which will be good challenges for the group. Uh, different challenges in their own way, um, but ones that we're, that we're looking forward to. Yeah, One of those games is Salem coming up. That'll be your mm -hmm. next one. What can we expect to see from them? Salem, I think, is, is much improved um, over the last kind of two or three years. Um, they've managed to, to have a consistent roster this year in terms of players. Um, a much more uh, larger roster um, in terms of their player pool. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that, that Bryce there is a first year head coach for the programme and, and uh, they're changing a lot of things for the better there, which is which is positive to see. Um, they'll be a lot, a lot fitter, um, a lot more well organised um, and we're looking forward to, to the game. And again, I think it provides a, a different type of challenge for our group. Um, they will, they will be really organised uh, and they'll be competitive and they'll want to do their very best. So we have to go into the game um, focused on what our job is and our job is to go down there and, and win the game. And now that the season is kind of progressing, we're getting into conference play, mm -hmm. uh, how do you feel this team will do uh, early on in this conference schedule and also just some of the difficulty with some of these teams because very familiar with each other? Yeah, um, I, I think the conference to me, is, is, is a strong one. Um, I don't think there's too much that separates a lot of the teams. Um, I think it's going to be, honestly, a battle no matter who you're playing. Um, and I don't think the, the conference standings necessarily will always reflect how the teams are. I think it's going to be uh, a difficult game uh, no matter who you're playing. Um, and, and for me, I just think some of the challenges are that you know, I think every team that we you play against is going to play slightly different and have different um, strengths and weaknesses. Um, so, for us, the the challenge is simply focusing on ourselves and focus on what what we want to do, um, and then ultimately looking at how can we exploit the the weaknesses of the opponent. Um, we'll focus on 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 what we can do um, as a team. Well, Coach, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to speak with us. Uh, good luck down in Salem on the traveling. Uh, again, uh, hopefully this season as we progress more uh, into it, we can uh, have some pretty good conversation mm -hmm. with how this team will develop and uh, some good topper soccer. Yeah, absolutely. We, we, 
we haven't quite shown it quite yet, but we have a lot of potential in the group, and uh, hopefully we can we can build on the the last few games and, and see better performances and ultimately results as well. Well, coach, again, thank you for being here, and don't go away, folks. We'll be right back for more inside Hilltopper Athletics. Welcome back to Inside Hilltopper Athletics. Uh, joining me now, the volleyball coach, Mackenzie Johnson. We've got a lot to talk about because since the last time we've recorded a show, four matches have been played. That's an awful lot in my mind for one week. Yes. That's incredible. <laughs> uh, how are you feeling? How's the team feeling? I think this weekend we found a little bit more of our identity as a team. Um, you know, it kind of started off slow against Barry on Friday. Um, but we really rallied back against Palm Beach Atlantic during that first match and, you know, kind of seeing some new players step up. Kai White had a great match against Palm Beach Atlantic. She, I, th I think that was her breakout match as a freshman. Um, Bella Dart really stepped up in the libero position. And then Riley Kudnick, she's always a strong competitor for us. She had a good weekend. But, you know, overall, I'm really proud of our fight. You know, we saw some, a little bit of a different style of volleyball this weekend. A lot of the teams we played had a lot of international um, student athletes. So, you know, kind of seeing how they stepped up, you know, and how they kind of rose to the challenge. It was interesting to see. So you got, ran quite the gamut here. We, we go from Atlantic Regional opponent in IUP was the yes. first one last <laughs> Tuesday night and then going all the way to Florida for the weekend tournaments. Yep. Uh, we, we go stick with the IUP one. Uh, the toppers uh, fell in that one three to zero, uh, the sets. Uh, but getting a taste of that and playing at IUP, mm -hmm. uh, a big rival, at least in the region, uh, how was that in the first time you as head coach got to face them? Yeah, I think obviously, you know, we were a little disappointed in the outcome, but, you know, kind of seeing their fight and seeing how we, you know, can compete with regional teams. Obviously, I don't think it was our best showing. Um, IUP played a great match. You know, Lowe, she's a great coach. She has a big roster. She can play around with a lot of her kids. Um, but, you know, just seeing them kind of rally back, you know, after that loss, you know, after that barrier loss, I always say, you know, how, how do you learn from losses, right? You can't make the same loss twice. Um, and I think that that really showed in the way that we competed over the weekend in Florida. Uh, how did the trip to Florida go? Yeah, it was, a, it was an early morning for us on Thursday. <laughs> um, you know, we got down there, got our rental cars. We were able to practice at a local club. Um, so that was good for the girls to kind of get the dust off and, you know, kind of stretch out their legs a little bit. But, you know, they enjoyed the sunshine, got to go to the beach, shopping, all that kind of stuff. So it was a good overall experience <laughs> for them, I think. <laughs> uh, so we will go with this Palm Beach Atlantic match. Mm -hmm. uh, the toppers win that 3-2, to two, uh, thrilling five sets. Uh, about 200 people in attendance. Mm -hmm. What was the atmosphere like down there? I think our bench carried our energy throughout that entire game. I kind of told them we talked about, you know, establishing some non-negotiables before that match. And, you know, that was one of those was our bench energy and our bench cheers. And I think that they kind of really carried that, you know, for us. And, you know, during that fifth set, I, I think I took both timeouts before someone scored point ten, And I said, listen, the next time we take a time, like the next time you go out here, we're, we're trying to force them to take their next time out. You know, kind of taking things one step at a time and just seeing some players step up that I haven't really seen step up yet this season, I think was interesting to see as a coach and seeing them play as a team. You know, everybody was supporting everybody. It was really cool to watch. Uh, with that, with this trip, we kind of see that with teams, doesn't matter what sport it is. Mm -hmm. uh, when you take long trips like this, you got that many matches mm -hmm. in a short period of time. You do kind of find yourself, whether it be a team or individuals, what are some of the things as a team that you were happy to see? I think one thing is that we, we have a few lineups, you know, kind of in our repertoire that we're able to compete with, that we're able to win with. Um, you know, seeing our freshman setter, Olivia Beldine, she really stepped up during that PBA match and was able to help us lead us to that victory. Um, so just kind of knowing that we may have a small roster, but our depth is there. Um, we're, able, we're able to run four twos or six twos or five ones. So I think that's really going to help us later on in the season. You know, maybe when that fatigue hits in, or even this weekend when we're playing two matches a day, um, you know, kind of having that depth, having that talent enough to give some people breaks but still get that win is, is huge for us. And the pace at which these matches are, that mm -hmm. these past two weeks or two and a half weeks, I guess, yeah. uh, how much 
toll does that take on the team and how much does that build for the future? Yeah, I, I think, you know, I tell them all the time, you know, after this week, we're never going to play two matches in one day, maybe two matches in two days. Um, but kind of, you know, getting them to push back that push past that fatigue, taking care of their bodies, ice baths. We did recovery after almost every single practice, I think, really helps them. Um, and then obviously, you know, the off days um, really help as well. But I think that, you know, we have a good group of girls who are taking care of their bodies, doing what they need to do. And and therefore we're able to compete at a high level, which we can do. Well, the first home match is coming up against Ursuline. Yep. Uh, it'll be your first as the head coach. Mm -hmm. Everyone here at the ASRC is going to get to see you. Mm -hmm. Your feelings going into this one? I'm super excited. Obviously, you know, having that stretch of eight, nine games where you weren't at home is kind of tough, but now we have a stretch of about five, six, seven games where we'll be, we'll be at home, you know, on our home court, and I'm just excited to see the girls compete in their home atmosphere in front of their parents, their friends, the fans, um, and then, of course, getting my first home opener as a coach is super cool. <laughs> and we're heading into conference play here very shortly. Mm -hmm. uh, has there been any special message to the team or just a certain take that you want them to have as they go into taking on conference opponents? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is Coach Cassie from the women's basketball team, she kind of reminded me to be, be where our feet are, and I think that's a huge thing for us is, you know, right now, as much as, as crazy as it sounds, we're not really worried about conference play, so we're worried about these five next opponents and kind of worried about this week and competing about that and then we'll worry about you know conference starting on Monday but being where our feet are you know worrying about the next opponent and not really worrying about you know the Charlestons or the Wheelings we're worried about where we are right now and that's Ursuline. Uh, so far it's again very early on in the season mm -hmm. are you happy with the team's development? Yeah I'm, I'm actually pretty satisfied obviously a little bit of a slower start than I think a lot of us anticipated um, but it's better to learn to lose as a team than it is to win as a team during these moments and during these games. And like I said, it's better to take these these losses now rather than conference play. Um, so I'm feeling really confident going to this weekend. You know, I think this past weekend in, in Florida, we found we found our identity a little bit. I think the girls kind of realized how good we can be and how good we are. Um, you know, we just got to keep working harder, harder and harder and harder in practices. And, you know, yesterday I was feeling good, pretty good about that. <laughs> well, folks, uh, if you want to make sure you get up here for the home opener for Topper, uh, uh, volleyball. This will get we film on Tuesday mornings. We'll try to get this posted as quickly as possible because that game is tonight, mm -hmm. uh, Tuesday at 7 p.m. here at the ASRC. So be sure to get in. Uh, also this weekend uh, there'll be some matches uh, and uh, some will be hosted also uh, at the Alma Grace McDonough Center in Wheeling uh, for the Atlantic Region Volleyball Tournament uh, coming up the 20th and 21st. Correct. Correct. Well, Coach, uh, <laughs> good luck in all of these games coming up. Thank you. We'll have a lot to talk about the next time, too, because yes, we've got we several. <laughs> and you said this is going to slow down a little bit. There's not yes. going to be quite as many. Yes. Okay, good. We'll get to be <laughs> in more depth and get to talk about some of these matches as we move forward. Yep. Sounds good. Well, uh, stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for more on Inside Hilltopper Athletics. Disasters happen. Pick the team that takes care of them all. Powered by offices in Wheeling, Morgantown, and Pittsburgh. Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration is ready to handle any size emergency at a moment's notice. We have the right people, knowledge, and equipment to respond 24 hours a day. I'm Roger Wiley. When disaster strikes your home or business, tell your insurance provider you prefer the restoration company the Hilltoppers call. Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. Welcome to Inside Hilltopper Athletics, brought to you by Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. Here's your host, Todd Allum. Welcome back to Inside Hilltopper Athletics. We've got Coach Jason Falvo of Women's and Men's Cross Country. Uh, Coach, you had your second meet of the season. It was in the same place, but a little bit different style, yeah. of course. Um, as we said, the second meeting in a row at this one, how do you feel your team performed uh, the second time around? Yeah, we, honestly, we had a great day. Both both teams performed uh, very well. You know, the course at Bethany is kind of our home course. We hosted last week, joint hosted with them this week. We had a chance to practice out there a ton. You know, Bethany is very accommodating to us with those. So uh, super excited about the results. Obviously, the guys winning the event and the girls taking third. Uh, was great. Uh, so we you know really just a, a, another impressive day for our athletes for sure. Well, it was a great day Saturday. The weather was tremendous. Yes. Uh, course conditions before the race began. Yeah, again, it, it's been so dry, yeah. right? And that really helps us in cross. So the course was hard. It was fast. 
not too dusty this time. Last time it was a little bit dusty, uh, cooler temperatures in the morning, running in the morning like we did this week. So, yeah, it was great. It was a very fast course, and, and uh, you know, Coach Gwynn and the staff did a really good job of setting it up. Uh, going into this, we'll go with the men's side first. Uh, toppers finished first overall yeah. throughout the whole uh, invite. It was Robert Allen who had finished third place with a time of 26.31. And uh, Tui also cro uh, crossed in fourth place at 26.35. Skylar Hudnall uh, finished seventh with a mm -hmm. time of 26.46. Strong yeah. finishes for a lot of you runners. Yeah, to be truthful, all the returning men hit their best ever at that course so every you know every course has a different feel and different time so every upperclassman for us hit their best and uh we certainly uh were very excited about that mac led the charge uh uh for a long time him and two we were up there really working and, and it should be noted that you know we were behind with you know we, we were behind gannon until about the last 300 400 meters and mac robert allen mac and Tui. <laughs> took off and pass it pass a couple of gannon runners at that time which gave us the win in the head-to-head -head matchup uh was really impressive for our kids to finish as strong as they did on the men's side and uh you know those two in particular you know really ran out in front and did a did a great job for us uh, also had some other finishers uh jasper brown uh, ended up in 11th place with a mm -hmm. 27 39 finish john skinner uh, finished 20th uh, at 28 and 8 seconds, sophomore yeah. Patrick Childress in 33rd, and David Wilson also finished in 53rd. Yeah, ja he mentioned Jasper first. That was his best ever at that course, too. You know, Jasper's got some big goals and some big aspirations of where he'd like to be. Uh, him being our number four right now is really good for us. Uh, he really he really has stepped up in his junior year and done a great job. Um, and then when you have a freshman in Skyler who's third now and really, like, there's a difference between high school cross country and college cross country in a lot of ways. And for him to run as strong as he did, we're really excited for that. John Skinner had another great day. He's a guy that really likes the heat. It's pretty warm for the guys race at the end of the meet. Uh, he likes that. Patrick ran fantastic. David ran fantastic. And David, you know, David's coming off of going to boot camp. He's in Army Reserves. Uh, so uh, he came back to us. He's a little a little behind in his training, but uh, for his first 8K, he did really good. Um, you know, freshman Zach Workman sat this one out, so we're looking forward to getting him went back next week. But overall, and we could not be happier with where the men's team is. This is the first time we've won a cross country race, to my knowledge, since the COVID season where everybody was in the spring. Um, so it's really good. You know, it's fun to win. It's really good to win. Uh, you know, we obviously were disappointed the week before. Uh, not winning that one where we thought we should, so we knew we'd get a little better this week. So, yeah, it was great. Well, we switched to the women's side. Uh, the women finished third overall in their uh, invite. Lacey Dimmitt finished third place overall, mm -hmm. uh, clocking in at 24.07. Uh, Morgan Lesnansky also followed behind in ninth place at 25.11. Allie Hicks finished in 18th place, yeah. 26.01. Emily Dunleavy in 19th place. A good running, good showing for the women as well. Yeah, it was really good. It was really good to have Morgan back. Morgan missed the first week just in a precautionary way, just trying to rest her just a little bit. Uh, having her back and Lacey up in the front uh, really helped us out. And, you know, Lacey, they all, I mean, they all ran great, really did. So, Allie, it was a little bit cooler temperature, as we talked about last week. She don't like the heat so much, so it was a little bit cooler of a temperature this week. So, um, having that foursome in there doing a really good job. You know, we rested a junior this week, um, and so we you know we were one down on that a little bit, but uh, felt really good about the whole team, you know, the way Emily ran, the way Michaela ran, um, the whole crew. So, uh, really good showing for us. You know, we uh, we thought we'd be. It's about what we thought we'd be, uh, and to see the progression. Again, the ladies that have run that course before at the 6K level, uh, they all hit their lifetime best at that course. So, what else can you ask for? Uh, you know, we continue to grow on that end. So it's been really fun. It's been really fun to see their excitement and their joy after each race as we progress. So, uh, Speaking with that progression, we, we talked a little bit about the individuals on the women's side and how they're progressing uh, as a team as they run out on the course. How do you feel that development has gone? Yeah, it's phenomenal. So I say this to the recruits all the time, and, and I'm an older guy, but like, if you were to vibe check our team, as the kids say, right, to get a get a good atmosphere of, of where our team is, uh, to me, it's we're such in a great place. They they really enjoy being together. They enjoy running together. 
they're each other's best hype person every week. Uh, the way that they uh, motivate and self-talk each other in, in a great way of the course of the week, it's phen phenomenal. And the ladies do it great. The guys do it as well. Um, yeah, the vibe's good. I, I don't know how else to say that, and, I, and I'm not, you know, I'm 47, but the vibe's great with those, and they do a great job with it. We're excited to, to continue to progress. Well, a uh, great job for both the men's and women's team uh, at this past but, uh, Bethany Bison invite. Uh, next up for West Liberty will be September 28th, uh, Saturday. They'll compete at the Lock Haven Invitational, hosted obviously by Lock Haven, as we were speaking before the show began. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of a preview. Yeah, yeah. So the uh, NCAA Regional Championships will be hosted by Lock Haven uh, a little bit later in November. Uh, so we're going to go out there and try to get a little – uh, a little preview of the course. Uh, it's a pretty flat course. It's great. It's a beautiful setting down in the valley up there at Lock Haven. They do a great job of hosting it. So um, we were out there last year, and uh, you know it was, uh, it was hot. It was hot. It was, it was hot. So this week, uh, or next week, excuse me, we should have a little bit better of weather and, and should be able to put down some pretty good time. So we're excited for it. It'll be a really good meet. A lot of great teams will be there, and you know we're, we're looking forward to it. Well, Coach. Uh Good luck in this next okay. one. Uh, congratulations on a big win. Uh, great finishes on both sides at the Bethany Bison Invite. Uh, Coach Jason Falvo here with us. Thank you for being with us. Uh, we will be right back for more on Inside Hilltopper Athletics. Welcome to Inside Hilltopper Athletics, brought to you by Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. Here's your host, Todd Allum. Welcome back to Inside Hilltopper Athletics. Joining me now, men's head coach for soccer, uh, Sean Regan, your fifth season here at West Liberty. Uh, the Toppers moving on with this season. Uh, they headed down to Concord in Athens, uh, came up a little bit short in that one uh, against a conference opponent, it was a, a tough one for you guys. Yeah, yeah. Concord has uh, dramatically improved over the past two years. And, you know, they went from basically, you know, one scholarship to fully funded overnight. So they went from what you thought was going to be an easy win every single year to now being one of the top two, three teams in the conference. So um, that, and they play on a very, very small field. Um, it's only 64 yards wide, so it's 17 yards more narrow than ours. <laughs> so it's a big difference, but. Uh, Double that with the fact that we just didn't show up. You know, we weren't very good on the day. Um, we weren't re mentally prepared for how good they were. Um, so that's always a recipe for disaster when that happens. But, uh, you know, it was it a little bit humbling at the same time, which is good. So we know what we need to do the next time we play it. Uh, well, uh, we move on from that one because the toppers had another match. Uh, they went to uh, Salem, but this time it came up on the victorious end, winning 4-2. to two. Uh, the toppers had a good one in this one or uh, this match. Yeah, yeah, Salem's a good side. You know, being a, a, not a not a conference game, but still a regional opponent. Okay, so you know, whenever you need to, to get a win against them, it helps with the standings and the rankings and everything like that. So, uh, dramatically improved from last year. A new coach, um, a ton of international talent um, on display, and it was probably. Um, the closest 4-2 game I've ever coached in terms of they were constantly putting on us under pressure. There was we couldn't breathe for a second. Um, but the big thing for us is that we took our opportunities. You know, we, uh, we I think we had eight, only eight shots, but we scored four goals. Yeah. So that's that's a great conversion rate for us for sure. And it started quickly too in that game, a match against Salem. Uh, in the first five minutes, uh, Zach Forehand was able to get that goal in. Yeah, it was good. You know, uh, we pressured in the first five minutes, and uh, just based on our work rate, uh, they cough went up close to their goal, and we were able to capitalize on, on that. Alex Watt put in a good shift up top and passed it over to, to Zach, who got his second goal of the season. So um, when you go up that quickly, it's sometimes it's a bit of a, de a detriment, you yeah. know, because you get really hyped up and you, you know think it's going to be an easy game, which it never was from the start. So uh, they quickly answered back uh, to make it 1-1, and, and then we were on our toes for the rest of the time. 
Uh, speak about the goaltender Colton Callen and how he did in this ball game. Yes, yeah, Colt made a great, a couple of great saves. You know, uh, it was a uh, unreal free kick that they scored against him, um, and then he had a little bit of a mix up with the center back to give up the penalty. Um, he just came out a little bit too soon and clipped the guy. Um, so when you only give up two goals, one's a penalty, one's a free kick, and you make your other six or seven saves, which you needed to, um, is one of the big reasons why we were able to win the game. And since we don't have any video footage of this uh, game, uh, I'll let everybody know at home who the goal scorers were. Zachary Forehand, Aiden Harvey, Tim Strickland, and Alex Watt. Uh, Watt with two shots on net, uh, got one of them in. Colton Callen with 11 saves mm -hmm. in this match. Uh, just a good win for the toppers and something definitely to build on. What are some of those more specific things you can build on from this win? Goal scoring was huge. I mean, uh, four goals is uh, something that's not very common in, in one game for sure. So to be able to get four goals um, should boost our confidence going forward. You know, if we can get one of the four goals in one game, you know, we know we can pretty much score in every single game, um, which is great. So um, that with um, doing a little bit better defending last game, um, we organized, we made a few changes in the lineup, gave a few guys uh, their first starts, um, and they are hugely impressed. Um, so over the next couple of days, we know we can rely on them as well. Well, the toppers move on. Uh, this show was filmed on Tuesdays. It is Tuesday, September 17th as we film this. Uh, so be sure once you watch this, the toppers play on Wednesday, September 18th as Cal comes to town. Uh, it'll be at 6 p.m. at the West Family Athletic Complex. Uh, the Vulcans coming in. What do you expect from this PSAC opponent? Yeah, so Cal PA, we play them every year. You know, it's a little bit of a local derby. Um, they're hardworking, mostly all Western Pennsylvania kids. Big, fast, strong, physical. Um, and then, you know, we've played them four years in a row. Um, last year was the first time we beat them. You know, we beat them 3 0 away. Uh, we Similar to, to the Salem game, we jumped on them early last year, got two quick goals, and then we were able to get one late in the, the second half. Um, so we're hoping to carry that momentum over. You know, they've played uh, Wheeling already this year, and they drew 1-1. You know, we're pr pretty much on par with them. So, you know, we'll look at the other conference results against them and see how we kind of match up, you know, from uh, from a long arm. Um, but, you know, we're hoping um, and very ready to for tomorrow. I think it's going to be a good game, and I think if we can beat a PSAC team, having already played a GMAC team and, and tying them, we know what we're like in, as a regional team. And I know it's early in the season, only a few games have been played, or a few matches have been played. Uh, where is your take on the development of this team, some individuals in the team as a whole? Yeah, the team as a whole doing well. You know, I mean, that's the thing. I, our goal was always to finish in the top four. You know, top six make the playoffs, but. We're, we're realizing that there's not a single easy game in our conference. You know, everybody can beat everybody, um, especially when you have two teams in, in the top 25 and a third team that's you know is in the top five in the region. Uh, so um, you have to be able to get some road victories as well. I think we're always going to be very very good at home. Um, even our loss to DNE, who's again a very good side, was 2-1 last 48 seconds. So if we can get beat Wheeling and we can beat Frostburg and we beat Wesley and those teams at home. Um, we're going to progress nicely. And then individually, it's just, you know, we, we have a core group of about 23 guys who played a lot of the past five games and getting some guys a little bit of rest because we play so thick and fast with Sunday and Wednesday and now Saturday. Um, just seeing who's able to step up if there's ever injuries or suspensions. Um, and the, everybody, those guys that have stepped up and played, they played well. So that's uh, we're happy that we can rely on them. Well, Coach, uh, thank you for being here this morning and speaking with us. Again, uh, good luck on tomorrow, Wednesday, mm -hmm. September 18th. Folks, get up here uh, and check out the toppers as they take on Cal PA, the Vulcans in town. That'll be a 6 p.m. kickoff at West Family Athletic uh, Complex. Again, thank you for being here. We'll see you next week, uh, and we will be right back for more on Inside Hill Topper Athletics. Disasters happen. Pick the team that takes care of them all. Powered by offices in Wheeling, Morgantown, and Pittsburgh, Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration is ready to handle any size emergency at a moment's notice. We have the right people, knowledge, and equipment to respond 24 hours a day. I'm Roger Wiley. When disaster strikes your home or business, tell your insurance provider you prefer the restoration company the Hilltoppers call, Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. Welcome to Inside Hilltopper Athletics, brought to you by Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. Here's your host, Todd Allum. 
Welcome back to Inside Hilltopper Athletics. A special guest with us, Scott Nolte, uh, local fame sports broadcaster, now the new West Liberty uh, Sports Information Director. Scott, thank you for being with us and welcome. Well, thank you so much, Todd. It's exciting for me to have this opportunity to be here uh, at West Liberty University, a chance to really be somewhere that I've watched for so long from outside covering Hilltopper Athletics for a number of years. If you go back 11 years ago, we worked together Together during the 2013 West Liberty football season doing the play-by-play -play, and you were so super helpful that year for me helping to produce uh, all of those games as well so this is just a great opportunity for me and something that I am super excited about to be a part now of Hilltopper Nation officially if you will. Uh, well, we're going to have a lot of fun with this. I I've got a feeling he's going to walk right into this and have no issue whatsoever acclimating to college. I know a lot of the time covering high school sports sure. uh, before, now we get to have the plethora of sports you cover for high school, but for one school and at West Liberty, your hometown, and you've got some uh, kind of close-knit things, family uh, connections here to West Liberty University. I do. You know, I've lived in Ohio County my entire life. Uh, I live in Clearview, so I live 15 minutes from campus. Uh, I've had two daughters that have already graduated from here. Uh, one was a cheerleader. My daughter's, daughter's Lauren Fox graduated from the nursing program. Uh, my daughter Paige graduated with an education degree and she was a cheerleader here. Uh, Lauren played softball for a year and now my daughter Lauren Nolte is a sophomore here at West Liberty also uh, playing softball for the Hilltoppers and she's also uh, a nursing major too. So uh, yeah, we've had a lot of involvement. West Liberty's been a part of our family's life for years. My dad was a graduate way back of old West Liberty State College. My wife is a West Liberty graduate as well. So West Liberty is something that's really a part of our family. And so for me, it was an easy choice when thinking about coming here and the opportunities that West Liberty offers. Uh, I've had a chance to watch it through so many different people's lives uh, and the effect and the enjoyment they've had from being here at West Lib that uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here now. Very excited. Well, the transition for you to go from on, well, I guess we're back on air already pretty quickly yeah. for you. Uh, but the transition from being on air to now SID, I guess you could say kind of behind the scenes. Yep. Uh, what are you looking forward to the most? I think I'm really looking forward to the ability to just focus on one school, one institution. You know, West Liberty has 19 programs that I'm going to be covering and following, but it's an opportunity to really kind of hone in on that one spot, that one space, as opposed to having to cover the entire Ohio Valley, 50 some high schools, plus all of the local colleges, the regional pro teams as well, really gives me a chance to just hyper focus on one school, a school that I would have been covering anyways, and a school that I'm excited to be covering. And it also gives me an opportunity to kind of really be invested. You know, when you're working in local television, you have to be impartial. You know, you have to care about both schools, obviously, that you're covering. Well, now I'm I'm a part of West Liberty. You know, I, I am a Hilltopper as well. So I have an investment in this, just as the student athletes and the coaches do as well. So I want to see these teams and these athletes have success. And when they have success, I get to be a part of that and really tell their story and enjoy that as well as they're enjoying their success. So that's probably what I'm excited about the most. Uh, as this season, or I guess this year, will go along, uh, what is the sport you're looking forward to covering or helping out with the most? Well, I, the easy one to say probably would be softball because my daughter's a softball player here <laughs> at West Liberty University, so I am excited about that. Um, you know, I've had a chance to really be involved in, and cover the men's basketball team uh, for all these years. Uh, you go, Going back from Coach Crutchfield, going back to Coach Petrie, I remember when Coach Petrie was here and I covered the Hilltoppers, but just from the time from Coach Petrie that, through Coach Crutchfield and now with Coach Hallett. Uh, I've had a chance to get really close to the men's basketball program at times. And so to now have an opportunity to be on the other side with them and kind of be on the inside, I'm looking forward to that. And obviously the great success uh, they've had. I'm really looking forward to getting a chance to though to also be a part of maybe some of the programs that I didn't have a chance to cover as much. Uh, some of the newer programs, the women's wrestling, uh, acrobatics and tumbling, that's new to me. So some sports out there as well that maybe I'm not as well versed in uh, that I'll have the chance to really learn now. Uh, I promise you, you will be impressed with acro and tumbling. Oh. It's unbelievable. The I've seen some of the videos and, and all of that. Yeah, the, the strength and the ability is unreal. Uh, seeing, uh, we were able to broadcast the first ever Perfect 10 for an event that they wow. had. I think it was their first or second year of existence and they yeah. did it. Uh, it was incredible. I used to make the joke. We've had, again, a lot of great athletics teams up here. Men's basketball mm -hmm. one uh, being one that will go long into the postseason. 
I challenge any other athletes on this campus, I don't yeah. care what sport it is, to do the things that Akron and Tumbling, there's no way. No, I, I, my daughter, uh, Annie, was a uh, dancer, competitive dancer for years. And in a lot of their routines, they would have Acro and Tumbling and things like that. And there were certain girls that could do chin stands and arm stands and the yeah. movements that they could do in those and the strength and the agility, no. I mean, I was an athlete way back when I was in high school. I could never do any of these things uh, that these people do. That's the way I kind of thought about it, too. Anybody can put a ball in a hoop now. Right quite as well as the men's basketball or women's basketball team, but people can do it. I, there's no way I'm doing Never. anything Never. in acro and tumbling no, whatsoever. Not a chance. Well, Scott, thank you for being with us. Welcome to West Liberty thank University. You, it is going to be more than I'm happy to have you here because I know if anything goes wrong with the broadcaster, <laughs> I need someone to help me out. We can have Scott no, fill in. or ha Happy to do it. Yeah, with absolutely. Me. Be happy to do it with you. Well, Thanks, Todd. Thank you for being here, and we will see everyone next time on Inside Hilltopper Athletics. From humble beginnings in 1837, West Liberty University has been home to thousands of students. Whether you're a recent high school graduate or looking to complete a college degree later in life, starting your educational career at West Liberty University will be the catalyst for your future. This is a place where you will discover who you are and where you belong, surrounded by lifelong friends and a supportive faculty and staff. Start your journey home at westliberty.edu.